Oh boy, here we go. Hear your voice. It's been a couple days. How have you? How are you doing? Yes, my mother has twitted my fucking tampon. Yeah, I didn't think I would. What happens when a man makes content about his insecurities and then realizes things aren't really going the way he hoped? What if his relationship with victimhood results in him telling one of the worst lies anyone could possibly tell, only for that lie to then uncover more that are almost just as bad? I don't know, but I have an example that could provide some answers. Hello and welcome back to Wish for Death Island Population Me. Today we're going to talk about what happens when a whale falls. この高校作るのに俺はたくさん日本語を勉強した自分のために<笑><笑> Hey, if Boogie gets to shill, so do I. Boogie's earlier videos are really a time capsule of YouTube's start. It's nonsense, basically. This isn't a good thing. He was definitely leaning into the idea that he's fat and being funny. To be fair, it is funny that he's fat. Add a tuba noise and I'll laugh like a toddler. I'm not pretending otherwise. Real quick, this isn't gonna be your typical documentary. For one, I don't really care that much and I don't care where he was born and where he went to school. Secondly, it's kind of boring and that's not really what my channel is about. So yes, I'm going to go back and forth between his newer and older content because it's kind of interesting, but I'm not really doing that in any super chronological order or trying to act like I'm doing anything more highbrow than I am. What I am doing is making fun of him, so that's what we're gonna do. But with his earlier videos, we come across our first problem here, the comedy. Boogie's idea of what jokes are and what colloquialisms are have always been a bit off. Now, if this is just the early days when he was finding his feet, there'd be no problem to point this out and just say, well, he got better from here, because everyone starts somewhere. There's no shame in that. There's no shame in trying to make some content or learning something and getting it wrong the first time and then picking yourself up. That's just human. But the problem is that Boogie never really stopped doing this. Let's take a look at this video about Halloween. Place and there's all these girls coming in in their Halloween outfits and girls, I love your Halloween outfits. I mean, I am not gonna lie to you. I like if you want to wear a skirt that's like a quarter inch from your ass crack. I I'm not gonna argue with you. That's a good decision. You're making good decisions. Uh, two two suggestions though. Uh, the first, could you stop being you know 15? Because you're making me feel like a pedophile. And um, secondly, uh, could you do it in this general area? Just kind of, just kind of wear that on, just set right down here in in the face area, please. Now, clearly, this is a joke. Despite dubious pedophile comments that he has said outside of this, this in itself is obviously a joke. The problem is the delivery. Dark humor is totally fine. I love it, but unless you're like a Norm or a Jimmy Carr, you have to work on what type of way you're saying these jokes. I personally would not be able to pull this style of joke off because I'm just not talented in that way to do it. However, if I had to try and figure out how to fix this, my attempt would be to put the underage statement as the last statement instead of the first one. Because this sets up the joke for the wrong thing and it makes it kind of, I guess, funny, I don't know, but basically you set it up with him just being horny and saying that he wants someone ass in his face, but then you do the kind of misdirection where you say that this was actually an underage person that he was talking about the whole time. That would make a little bit more sense. The delivery is still a problem and I can't really comment on that because I don't know how I would do it because I can't really, but that's just something that I would fix right off the bat. I'm also bringing this up because this is a clear distinction between someone saying a joke and it failing and someone doing something and then claiming it's a joke afterwards to cover up for what they did. There's going to be instances of Boogie making jokes that aren't funny and are actually kind of creepy, but we can still tell that they're jokes and they just didn't land because he doesn't really know how to do it. 
But then there are times when he says something or does something and you can clearly tell that's just what he's doing. But then he acts like people pointing out what he did is them being stupid because it's actually a joke all along and none of us noticed it. These are two different things. I think that everyone watching most likely can understand the difference between both. I just wanted to talk about these with numerous examples because he does it so often that it's really annoying. But then we can get into Boogie's proper videos where he takes topics seriously and and he didn't really get popular doing that. He got popular doing the jokes, but over time the proper content kind of became the more dominant one. Initially, he was seen as someone who was just trying to see both sides in a way that was balanced, refreshing in an effort to combat the internet's love of fighting over everything, of which I contribute to quite a lot. However, there's a line between that and flat out fence sitting, and I think you can see where I'm going with this. While Boogie was still largely seen as someone who meant well and was just kind of a nice innocent fat man like Santa, he was catching some ire because he seemed to lack any spine at all. There's a difference between being a genuinely kind, patient and understanding person and just being a blobfish. If there was any comment, no matter what it was, he would find a way to set fence it on it, even for some of the most bizarre <laughs> things possible. It's like some really crazy shit. Mm -hmm. And so what I found out from this book is a lot of Nazi scientists and doctors were given asylum in the United States in exchange for the knowledge they had possessed. I didn't know that. You know, but uh, if you think about it, a lot of a lot of some good came from all of that in that health science was was advanced many, many years. And that's one of the things that kind of made me have the mentality that I have. Nothing is black and white. The Holocaust is horrible, absolutely horrible, but some good kids. What the fuck? Initially, some people kind of went easy on him because of the abuse that he claimed he suffered. There was a trend on YouTube like a decade ago called Draw My Life, which is exactly what it sounds like. Boogie said he came from an abusive and neglectful household. He was raped and hit and molested and he's fat because he wasn't given proper nutrition. He had a girlfriend once but she died of double cancer or something, whatever that means. What the fuck? He was just a big traumatized loser who needed people to give him a chance. And this was enough for people to give him a chance. But then he took that chance and kept going with it. He kept reminding them about it. Again, and again, and again. Back then, these kind of things started small, like gaming controversies. There was an Xbox issue at the time where people were very mad at the disappointing overpriced service that they were receiving and that they weren't getting a proper outlet to give feedback for from the company. It's a tale as old as time with any big company. And the best thing you can do about it is spread the word and complain about it online so that more people know and the people who have gone through getting this disappointing product will have some way to feel justified. Boogie, however, decided that he was going to fence it. Seeing all sides of the argument is perfectly fine and honestly a good thing sometimes, but there's this condescending nature that he has with his lack of spine. It's almost contradictory because you typically shouldn't be proud of something like having a weak spine, yet he is. And it's almost as if you having convictions and morals and things that you stand on are making you a bad person. This obviously caused some issues because people are angry and this guy is kind of dismissing their very legitimate concerns as if it was just little nonsense. Instead of seeing how someone can feel scammed because they paid for something and it definitely didn't match up to what the ad was. This also didn't help his image and it was followed by another incident when he fence sat on his own controversy. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Eh? Yes. Look at you. VidCon. It is an event where nerds, freaks, and greasy weirdos meet together on the internet, but in real life. This particular vidcon was at the height of the SJW war, where people were making response videos to woke idiots and screeching feminists with coloured hair, and some of them were also idiots, so it was just idiots everywhere. I would know, because I remember making videos on that too, and I'm an idiot. I guess we're still doing that now, but back then, there was this like genesis of a particular kind of content in commentary and it kind of died out when commentary evolved into whatever the fuck it is now. There was this dumb bitch called Anita who would make stupid videos about games and get information wrong, but if you corrected her she'd call you a sexist. For example, I personally remember that she acted like the purpose, the gameplay, and the goal of Hitman was to stalk and kill women, <laughs> when that's the opposite of what the game is telling you to do. In many of the titles we've been discussing, the game makers have set up a series of possible scenarios involving vulnerable, eroticized female characters. Players are then invited to explore and exploit those situations during their playthrough. 
The player cannot help but treat these female bodies as things to be acted upon, because they were designed, constructed, and placed in the environment for that singular purpose. But Boogie had talked about the internet bullying at VidCon on his panel, and I can't think of anything more boring than sitting and watching a bunch of YouTubers in real life talk about bullying at a convention, but that's what happened. However, when Boogie had talked about internet bullying and he went off stage and the event was over, Anita suddenly spawned in and confronted him in what he kind of made sound like a kind of negative violent, not violent, but like a very mean kind of way because she didn't get to unpack what he said and it was a bit of an aggressive tone. No one really was surprised by this because like I said, Anita doesn't have the best reputation and it's definitely her fault. Boogie was also seen as like, as I said, a very nice, calm, mellow person. And because of this, people tended to feel the need to protect him because they were like, oh, he's weak, he can't really handle this. But it wasn't seen in a necessarily negative way because the fence sitting wasn't really as talked about as it was now. But he changed that because he decided to capitalize on this interaction and also fence it on himself because he's so much of a fence sitter that he can't even keep his own experiences straight. Two things to remember here. One is that he can't even keep his own story straight because he's a fence sitting liar. And two is that he's very bad at jokes and colloquialisms, but having a track record for being bad at them means that he can claim something was a joke when it wasn't and maybe people will believe that that's true when it clearly isn't. A prime example is of this setup is a recent event where Boogie supported a scam coin he was sponsored by, so let's talk about that. Boogie had lost and gained money in crypto before. He's, he's a YouTuber, all of them seem to play around in finance and all of them seem to lose. <laughs> you usually hear when a big YouTuber suddenly loses it all in a shit coin that they were promoting like hell, because as far as I'm concerned, all crypto finance is bullshit and it's all a scam and you should stay away from it. That's my personal financial advice. But Boogie had actually gotten a lot of money from his first try and he had tweeted before that it's a bad thing to get into internet finance because at the time I guess it was favorable for him to say that. He changes this opinion. He had been told, however, to actually get into finance by a, another YouTuber that he's friends with who is also fucking obese. But then he lost the money, and the only money that he had or now was the one that he'd originally put into it. So he'd broke even. He hadn't lost any of his own money, he just lost everything that he had won before. But he refused to take his money out of the account because he's an idiot, and he acted like having this wallet was his own personal bank account and just the safest one. But he soon lost that money because he's stupid, and he was left in a bit of a pickle, according to him. Especially because, again, according to him, he had a lot of life or death medication to buy, but no money for it. Medication for what? Well, if you know, you know, but for those of you who don't, the next part of this video is going to be kind of wild. <laughs> Another thing you need to know is a pump and dump scam. Basically, scammers will make a coin and advertise it as the next big thing, trying to get people to put money into it. And then they will also get sponsors and other high profile people that they can find to inflate the value with a bunch of money and advertise it to all the peons. But they and all the insider buddies will quickly withdraw while the coin has inflated value. So they get a big return investment, but the people who have lost the money that they put in because they weren't in on the scam have lost whatever they put in. The coin then means nothing anymore because the whole purpose of it was just to carry some money that they got from other people into their own wallets. A similar situation happened when a bunch of inside traders made some game cartridges way more valuable than they actually are so that people could start auctioning them and they all did this so they could make a bunch of money and then when they stopped carrying the market would fall. But luckily it didn't get as harmful as it would have been because people like Carl Jobs made videos on it and I'll link some of that maybe if I remember. Anyways, after Boogie's personal crypto loss he said that he was doing well and he just lost it and then he said that you know he was trying again. He was still doing it, which I think is a very stupid idea, but whatever. But then that eventually morphed into him saying that he needed help from people, he needed donations, he was plugging his merch, and it's in his usual backhanded way of, I'm not asking you to do anything while asking you to do everything. He also claimed the income from his own channel and Patreon combined was less than a thousand dollars, so he went into crypto again. He promoted a scam that had pump in the title. The company's name was legitimately advertising itself as a pump and dump scam. However, the way that he 
promoted it was in a way that he claimed was a joke. Now, yes, there are some jokes in this video, but it is still a video that's promoting a product. You can put jokes into things and cover things in a snarky way, but still be genuine in the message that you're conveying. You see it a lot of times when people get genuine sponsorships on their videos, but because they're a comedic YouTuber, they film themselves talking about it in a strange way. Listen up, all you top Gs. There's some misinformation being spread around right now by certain influencers, but I'm here to tell you the truth and the hacks to help you break free from the matrix so you can be a brokey like me. Now listen, little Andrew's out there needing consistent validation. Oh, love me, love me. Won't you love me tonight? And the occasional meme coin. Fatty for life. <laughs> what a shame. He can't really be. There must be something we can do. When Bookie's covering this content, he's making fun of himself, but it's still a genuine promotion of this product. People lost money from it, and you could tell that they would lose money from it because Bookie still has somewhat of a following at this point. And when this did happen, he backpedaled and said that it was all satire and that people who put money into it were just misguided. So it's not his fault, even though he got paid to promote it, and then he screamed at everyone who claimed that he is a bit culpable for the damage. An example is CoffeeZilla, who generally goes into these kind of scams. He called Boogie to try and straighten things out and see what was up, because he was actually contacted by Boogie beforehand when this went down. Boogie then screamed at him like a crazy crackhead, because of course, and said that he needed the money because he has cancer and needed to pay for the expenses. Hmm. Really makes you think. You paid the 5000 Five days ago? Later, I verified with Boogie this payment occurred on June 19th. And when Boogie said all the money was gone on June 26th, that gives us a window of time where he should have receipts for about $5,000 of medical expenses. Boogie, when I asked, agreed to share these expenses with me. And the following conclusions are based on him providing accurate records, which... Yes! Have you never heard of the colloquialism? Yeah, that money's all gone, it's all spent. I have a specific thing I need to do with it. Have you never heard that colloquialism? Use fucking Google then! But the people are retarded. He already paid for it and he didn't have the money anymore. The money was gone. And th that's actually not true because the money is gone is a colloquialism apparently that I've never heard before. And this is how he tries to play it off as a joke. He says that everything he's saying is a joke and that the people who actually believed it are all stupid. Which is him basically victim blaming and saying that the people who actually thought that maybe this would help him out and decided to look into the thing that he was sponsored by because they don't know anything about pump and dump scams just looking to get scammed i guess listen i think that sometimes people are stupid and i i agree that sometimes people are like that but this isn't one of those times the ultimately the thing that i mentioned at the start is something that i want to bring up here the thing is when he makes a bad joke you can still tell that he's trying to make a joke it's not like his tone is exactly the same as it is when he's being serious in a comedy movie you can still tell when they're trying to make something funny even if it's terrible and it's not funny at all so this is clearly very easy. It's very easy to see when he's actually making a joke and he's failing or when he is actually saying something and then dialing it back and pretending that he didn't. You can see that he has flip-flopped on all of these things before because his convictions just turn on a dime. He also has no principles but he loves the positives and praise that comes with having principles but not the sometimes hard work and negativity that you get from people who disagree with you when you actually operate on those principles. An example of this is when he said he really likes good things and hated bad things but the people who hate on him hate the good things because they're bad people and bad people hate good things and like bad things. This is a real thing that he said. My god, the vitriol. Block and tell them to fuck off. I did, and then I recently unblocked them because I need to be able to see what they're saying. I thought we were past this. I thought these sad, sick individuals were past this. I really did. I thought you guys had grown up. I thought you guys had moved on. I thought you guys had become better people. And it, it's really sad. It's really sad to see. I wish to God I could save you guys from this obsession and this lunacy and this craziness and this hate that you guys are filled with. I wish to God, I pray to God every day that I can learn a way and find a way to fix you guys. I do. Every day I feel so bad for you. I feel so bad for you every day. But the story continues. The next time he had a call with CoffeeZilla, he screamed about being recorded, even though 
it was perfectly fine that he was. He was... The thing about Boogie is that he's either nice behind closed doors and then screaming on camera or screaming behind closed doors and nice on camera. So whatever he's doing in front of you is the opposite of what he was doing behind the scenes. And it's quite interesting to watch. I'm not a psychologist, but I'm sure that there will be more of those psychologists on YouTube who will point this stuff out like they were in the documentary, which we'll get into. But I'd specifically, if any of them are watching this, like to know about that kind of opposite that he portrays and why he always switches up in an opposite way. Specifically that, it's just very interesting to me. While this was happening, Keemstar and Wings of Redemption came together to make the LOL Cow podcast, starring Boogie as well. Boogie was incentivized to be on it for money reasons, or he was going on but quitting and saying he hated the show, but we all know he wouldn't. He would also scream at the others for not showing up as well, so he clearly cared about the product. He would claim that he isn't being paid when he definitely was, and then says that he paid other people when he probably didn't. He adopted this kind of bad guy persona that was a bit like an edgy early, you know, I'm not like other YouTubers kind of persona, but with some weird ass southern type of accent that he didn't really show that he had before. Basically, just these two guys screaming at each other. For every fucking dime, every fucking penny, except I'm willing to fuck everybody else out of ten thousand dollars. Because let's imagine, last month the show made twenty fucking grand. I fucking tried since you asked me to do How? that. The problem How? is, I don't give a fuck about Mike Clum. If Mike Clum was on fire, I don't. I wouldn't piss to put him out. That's Man, very nice. um, <laughs> that yeah. doesn't mean you don't care about him. That means you hate I mean, him. Mind boggling, motherfucker. What's mind boggling about me? I don't me? fucking know. None of the sense you. None of the, the. The best guess I have is you look at a situation, pick the worst possible option, and take it every time. I feel like you're that's living. That's very ironic. Of me. Yeah. Yeah. Boogie mm. constantly making big W's on his decision making. Yeah. <laughs> you should. You should act like me. <laughs> yeah. You should be a winner like me. Also, usage of more words that he doesn't really use in other videos, like goddamn, and doing random accents. You better thank a union member. I think that maybe this was a crossing point for him, where he thought that everyone saw him as a bad guy for the, for the scamming, so that he decided to adopt that into a persona and use it to generate money, when that's not really working so well. Because he can't really stick to it. He keeps flip-flopping between being some down-on-his-luck guy who's hit rock bottom and doing what EFAP has affectionately called the one HP voice that sounds like he's dying, which I will now call it that because it's hilarious, or being the orchestrator of all these events and being literally Hitler. It's just, I don't know, where the wind blows, I guess. The day I took my most prized possession and I sent it to you. It's the only thing I ever wanted to be that's with. your most prized possession. <laughs> Only it thing you wanted is. to be buried yeah, because with. It probably it's, is. It's the uh, it's the symbol of what he wants. Good, good, good show. Okay. Good yeah, show. Good right. show. The Lol Cow Podcast is a show that stars some guests, but usually has Boogie, Wings of Redemption, and Keemstar as the host. Wings of Redemption also has his own controversy, but it's just it doesn't really matter, I guess. Basically, like I showed, it's them screaming at each other. If you like that kind of thing, that's on you and you should enjoy yourself, but other than being the place where Bookie has said and done some abhorrent things that we can poke fun at here and making for a great EFAP episode, this is all a waste of time in my opinion. It reminds me of that thing called internet blood sports, which was when a bunch of people started screaming at each other on the internet and I never really got into it, I just didn't care, for the same reasons that I've stated here, but there were still some funny things on there I guess. Low cow podcasts and the stuff like it are what I like to call highlight reel entertainment. I, what I mean by this is it's the type of content that you only really get something out of when other people have made highlight reels of the funniest parts of it, but when, and it kind of makes it sound way more entertaining than it actually is. So when you get into the real episodes because you're expecting the same level of comedy and energy, you're not going to get that because all of the good content has already been compiled into highlight reels. That's really how I view all these kind of things. There are so many of these streams in general, like, there's no way in hell anyone on this earth has time to watch all of them. That's just messed up. I barely have time to catch up on the shit I do watch. But on this show, Boogie's personality switch showed up once again, and it's a very good example of this. 
He tried too hard to produce this tough guy figure that he was desperately clinging to to get more eyes on the show, and it's kind of painful because of how much it fails. It's like some strange attempt at masculinity, but he's only seeing masculinity through video games and other lol cows, so he doesn't actually know what real masculinity looks like. He has also insulted other guests in such projections sort of ways, it's very interesting. Their wives and children actually hate them, and, and that they all are terrible to their wives and children with no evidence. He abandons the nice guy persona but occasionally brings it back when he needs to back out of things he has said and needs to play the victim because people are insulting him on something. The one HP voice is a voice where he sounds like he's on the verge of crying or he's gonna pass out because he's being so sincere and truthful right now that he has nothing left to lose, nothing left to gain, so he is just trying to be really... He also flip-flops between who he hates and who he trusts so that when someone asks him why he didn't DM them for something important, he says that he couldn't trust them enough to do so, but then says that he tried to DM someone and they didn't respond so he acts like he tried to trust them and he failed. It just depends on where the wind blows. Viewers of my channel will know that I always bring up Schrodinger as a comparison and I'm gonna do it again. I've used this in the past when talking about bad politicized content like Velma and Batwoman where I describe what I like to call Schrodinger's bigot. This is my term for when the background characters and the general population in the show change between being very bigoted and hateful to being very supportive and left-leaning depending on how they need to be for the narrative being peddled. It's kind of like with a Mary Sue. Everyone either loves the Mary Sue or they hate the Mary Sue depending on how you, the audience, is supposed to see them. Are you supposed to pity them because everyone hates them and they're really trying super hard right now but it's not their fault? Or everyone in the audience loves them because everyone else in the show now loves them? It's just that kind of thing. With Boogie, I feel he suffers from what I'm going to say is Schrodinger's persona. He can either be unapologetically evil or very and very edgy in a try-hard way, or very weak and timid who is just a man down on his luck and a very good guy at heart. It just depends on who's watching. Here's some more podcast nonsense as an example. Usually, the lol cows just screaming at each other is Boogie's like edgy man persona. But every now and again when he gets caught out on a lie that he can't spin into being an edgy man persona, he goes into his genuine this is really me talking persona, which is definitely not him talking in real, in the real. He rewrites himself in the past as a very kind person who, when his first p appearances online were quite edgy, and when he, he's called out because the shield of satire is not an excuse and not really working, he goes into one his 1 HP voice and tries to say, well, I'll just kill myself then, and it's kind of like talking to a brick wall. In one of his bad Kai persona switches, he claimed that so diet soda has the same amount of calories as air, and it's the same as breathing air. Drinking sodas, you know how much weight he'd oh lose? God. If he just switched from soda to water. Sodas have zero yeah. calories in them, you uh, morons! It's a, it's, a it's a scam, it's a lie! It's calories in versus calories out! No, 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 no. Tell him about Diet Coke being a scam. Look, it says light beer. I can drink as much as I want. <laughs> it, he's well, trying to understand. That's a scam. You actually don't understand he's, how, like, he's, diet he's soda He's trying to argue. That he can drink Mountain Dew on the level that most normal humans drink water. He's just like, yeah, I can. It's no calories. I can drink it. It says diet. Oh, zero scam. fucking calories. Boogie. That's a scam. Ca Idiot. These these zero calorie sodas. They have so many chemicals in them. They're slowing down your metabolism. Oh, you know what else is a chemical? Fucking water. That's H two O. That's also. Well, I mean, you're also boogie. you chemical. nailed him. Good. Good. Go also, what was brought up was that during the pump and dump scam thing, Boogie had contacted Coffeezilla right when he was actually doing the scam, but he only contacted Coffee because he wanted to make it seem like he was double checking with someone. However, you can't really double check with someone with if you should go through with a decision or not when you've already done the decision and you're just kind of checking in, <laughs> you know what I mean? A really big example of Schrodinger's persona with him is to do with his relationships, but first I think we should get into the documentary to lay some groundwork for that kind of thing so that you'll understand what I'm saying when I bring it up. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Yes. A documentarian by the name of Mike Clum decided to spend some time with Boogie so that he could do a documentary because it was quite a weird topic. The idea of having people online making videos of their lives being something that you can live off of makes some people feel like they can live forever and that it'll always be around. But then, all of the original content creators either wised up and moved on and they're living successful lives offline, or they're lol cows now because they always were weirdos but they just hid it better before. This documentary is great and I'm going to only 
talk about some important parts of it for my own context for the rest of my video, but I'm obviously not here to be a substitute for watching it or to summarize all of the content within it because I'm not one of those bread tubers who just plays videos whole cloth without even fucking watching them, so obviously you should watch the documentary on your own. It opens up with him basically saying that he was loved by many people but he had a downfall because people see him as a shitty person now and honestly it's kind of strange because he acts like he wants to have the scraps of privacy that he has left in his life but one of the first shots in this thing is him being naked in a bathtub because privacy doesn't really matter to him. It's him talking about how he dated a girl who liked childish toys and how he played with toys with her in the bathtub it's, and then fucked her afterwards it's... I, I don't... I don't like this. What the fuck? He also claimed that during the documentary, he only had about $2,000 in his bank account and $700 will be gone for mortgage until his YouTube pays him. And net, his net worth is just zero, even though he has so many things around him. And his priority should be just living in general, but he wanted to save $20,000 to remove his fat skin. But he also says that the ladies love the meat curtain, so I don't know. Please, please. There's also the example that has just gone on everywhere by now where he said he wanted to save money yet he bought himself a hundred dollar soundbar when his tv started cra crackling and he didn't return it even though the tv got better afterwards and he doesn't need it anymore because it's the only joy that he has in his life but his arcade is the also the only joy he has in his life and using the internet is also the only joy he has in his life and eating food is also the only joy he has in his life and his girlfriend is also the only joy he has in his life and spending money is the only joy he has in his life so that's why he's an addict of spending money the funniest part of this is that there is a prostitute who explains Boogie was so shit and grotesque that she quit sex work. Good for her. Sex work isn't the way to go. I'm glad that she turned away from it because I don't like sex work and I'm happy for her. <laughs> but one another Schrodinger's persona example is that he explained that he spends like thousands of dollars on women and he treats them well so he's doing like the good guy persona like yes I I got a chance at dating hot women because of the money that I made from YouTube uh, but I did nice things for them like I gave them really expensive gifts and I put their kids through school and I deserve it because I'm a loser who never got to fuck the pretty girls only shitty girls and then he immediately goes into being the shitty guy by saying like I think that all of these women are a little fat for my taste I like gorgeous girls not girls from Arkansas as if all girls from Arkansas are like ugly <laughs> so it's like he's a sleazy guy and he knows he's a sleazy guy because he likes to pay for women to fuck him but at the same time he's not a sleazy guy he's actually a really down-to-earth down on his luck kind of guy who still thinks that women are amazing and values them in a very equal kind of way and he, he treats them so well. It just depends on who he's talking to. In the documentary, he says he likes to go to Disneyland with beautiful girls, but then on Lolcow, when some thought streamer offers him a Disney trip that she will pay for, he's like, can you just give me the cash that you would have spent on the trip? Like, okay. I will personally fly you out to Florida. Sure. Pay for oh, your hotel, punishment. or you can stay in my oh. home, and I will take you to Disney. Don't let him into your house, what? love. <laughs> I was gonna say. <laughs> can I get the oh. cash equivalent? Okay. What? Oh, okay, cool. for fuck's sake. He, oh, wow. has chance, does he? he is so shocked, he is shook, about sending his Magic the Gathering cards to the pawn shop for making ends meet because it's his only joy in life. But he also has a private chef who is a roommate of him, and that guy pays rent as well. And his friends in real life apparently didn't know he's broke, but they do know he's broke. He gets less than he wants for the cards and then immediately goes to the drive-thru and makes Mike come pay for the food. <laughs> Two... No, make it three chicken quesadillas. What's... Why do you do your Francis voice at the drive-thru? You're in real life, you fucking idiot. Act like a real person. There's this big scene where he tells his friends that he wants them to bring girlfriends around more often and makes fun of them for not dating for a while. It's very awkward because you can tell that people are kind of confused at what he's saying because he himself is a guy who pays for prostitutes. And he also says that he has a very dark sense of humor but at the same time says that he doesn't like it when people make fun of him for his weight. Some of these jokes are fucking disgusting too, like this clitoris scalping joke. Oh my god. I, as, as a woman, I feel the equivalent of if you as a guy like see someone's balls getting hit or something and you like feel psychic pain that that's my version someone says you can't put your finger into a clitoris somebody here doesn't have a scalpel handy you splay that fucker just right you can wrap it all around your fingers you just gotta you gotta shave real thin 
Woo! That's disturbing. That's the most fucked up thing I've said in a while. During the documentary, he, despite saving money, says that he it only has this joy in life and then it's like he spends a bunch of money that he doesn't have on the only joy he has in life and then he moves on to the other only joy he has in life he went to the arcade because it's the only joy he has in life and he spends like 30 dollars there when i'm pretty sure that arcades cost way more than that he also sprained his ankle while walking to the bathroom and it's swelling but he still goes for lots of walks and walks his dogs everywhere and he just can't lose the weight because I guess the weight is like magical or something. He reads out his list of diagnoses and list of medications while Amazing Grace plays and the song choice makes me laugh so hard. That is everything keeping me alive. We have Losartan, Tramadol, Bupropen, Sertraline, uh, did I deal with back pain? In Low Cow Live later, he rereads all of these things, pretending that he's reading them from his official diagnosis from the doctor, but he's clearly just reading them from the documentary and adds a couple things at the end. And even when people called him out on this, because it's extremely easy to do so, he said that the guy making the documentary is, is like a bad guy or something. I don't know what the fuck the logic is here. Some of these psych psychologist YouTubers come in to kind of show how he's super negative and talks more about money and less about being grateful and actually having a good life. And it's very true, like, I like Dr. Grande, for example. They, they don't, like, diagnose him, but they just talk about stuff that, like, the things that he does remind them of, like, one of them is covert narcissist. However, Bookie hears about this, takes this label, and just clings to it as much as he can. Something that, as on the podcast, EFAP podcast said was that Boogie's been googling again whenever something like this happens because it genuinely feels like he's gone through a specific term and the list of requirements that you have to be diagnosed by that to have that term and then he just acts out all of them as much as he can in the most stereotypical way possible and then as soon as he's done using that term and getting what he wants out of it he drops those characteristics and he never brings them up again he then talks to a job manager lady who is actually very helpful and it's a shame because she's really trying but he's not giving her anything he says the worst possible traits about himself and that he does porn and he's a redditor and he's very depressed and fat and doesn't want to get up to work and he's fucked up because he's a felon because he shot a warning shot when some guy came to his house and he says that he can't have a real job because he's a super popular youtuber so he'll make money on his youtube despite the fact that his youtube isn't making him money anymore this negativity clearly shows that he doesn't actually want to get a real job but he's just trying to look like he's trying to get one and saying that i'm so negative that i can't even get a real job when you clearly could get one if you actually tried not just pretended to try. His girlfriend is like 20, I think, at the time that this was made and they met when she was 19 because they started talking about trauma and they just trauma bonded because they're both very damaged individuals and with his life experience and her having some issues, it just seems very predatory to me. She looks so eerily like his ex-wife and has the same name as her, and she only knew him for about two months when she moved in. She does everything, she cleans, she does the gardening, she looks like she does the food and walks the dogs. When he talks about how he loves her and they show her and they try to ask her what she likes about him, it's like she doesn't actually know. It's adorable to me, I like him. He was going through a lot and I randomly hit him up on Instagram and I told him that I, you know, I support him and that I'm always here for him and stuff and so. Honestly, this comedy club nonsense is also painful. They went to a comedy show and he specifically told the guy ahead of time that he is a famous YouTuber. So obviously the comedian can make fun of him and basically humiliate his girlfriend in front of everyone. But because they're trauma bonded together, it basically does this sort of thing to her where it's like, everyone's gonna make fun of us, but I'm always sticking with you. We're both in this boat at the bottom of the ocean. It's always gonna be this way, like it's, it's kind of purposeful in a creepy way. There was also one of these YouTube boxing events which I also don't watch because I see them as a waste of time and Boogie to his credit did show up but he got defeated by the other fat man and that in itself is kind of funny to me. He said that he was paid 10k for it and then he's just squandered it because that's just what he does. This shaman comes to do drugs with Boogie? A shaman! A shaman! And then Boogie doesn't pay him properly apparently so he sprays the word pedophile on the door of his house. Looking at this stuff, it's kind of easy to kind of be sympathetic to him. 
that's why I wanted to show it first before getting into like the finer details of some of the other more egregious things that he's done. Because to some people who don't really know who he is, it must seem really sad. Like it just seems like a guy who's down on his luck and he's doing everything he can but people just have a negative opinion of him and he doesn't know what to do. But they just don't really know who Boogie is. And ultimately, this documentary is here to kind of dig a bit into things, but not act like it has all of the, the answers. It doesn't. Finally, I get to eat. What the fu- Back to what I said about the personality thing. You'll notice a portion of this video focused on his girlfriend, who was basically the maid, the gardener, the help, and then his girlfriend. But she actually looks incredibly similar to his ex-wife, who he had actually met during his channel's life because she was originally a fan. Boogie's wife quit her job to care for him when they were married. Hmm. Really makes you think. Back then, it was seen as a good thing on certain parts of YouTube to really pay attention to and respond to your commenters, but now it's seen as obsessive and unhealthy because there's just so many, so it makes total sense. If you're a smaller YouTuber who only gets a couple comments, responding to them might seem like a thing where you actually really care about what people have to say, but if you're Boogie's channel size, there is no way in hell that you're reading all of them unless you're so unproductive that everything that you do revolves around that. Around 2012, you can definitely see some of the self-pity and I'm definitely a good person nonsense happening in his vlogs. Apparently he was a web developer at some point and he had a porn blog, but nowadays he has a very tech illiterate kind of persona as well. So again, he's, he's as helpless as he needs to be to push a narrative, but then other times he's like an evil guy who knows exactly what he's doing and he's just screaming at everyone. Like at, at his peak, he went on a show about weight loss, he was on TV, he got married, he got sponsorships, he won an award for some gaming nonsense, he actually tried to lose weight properly or made it look like he was actually trying. But despite all of this, his fence sitting and the ultimate weakness of his character made it all go away. He changed his content from trolling to sappy neutral content to trolling again. I feel like a lot of these people have these issues where they end up hating their own audience and blaming themselves because they don't understand that the way that you act attracts the people who will act the same way towards you. If you're okay with banter and having jokes but you are sticking to your principles, then you will attract people of that kind of caliber. If you're just a troll, you attract people who want troll content and want to sort of troll banter back and forth with you. And if you're hand you can handle that, you enjoy that, then you should do it. But if there's a line that you want to be put in place, then you yourself need to not cross that line. If you cross that line, other people will see it as an invitation to do the same thing to you. And you can't really say anything about that because you yourself crossed that line. But, uh, it's out, bro. Right, are, your still, are your parents still, are your parents still alive? By chance of... Here we go, ready? Yeah, yeah. And are your parents still together? No. Okay, alright, so I maybe I should take point then. What? Uh, well, if your parents aren't together, then you probably come from a broken home. You're probably going to get real angry when you start losing, so... And thanks for two months of support, man. That's a lot of money, I guess, for a person of color, or is it not? I don't know. <laughs> that was the, that was the... We never can talk about it publicly. We can never talk about it publicly how much tremendous damage this does. We can never talk about it publicly. But every YouTuber I talked to at VidCon talked about this with me. It's like when someone who thinks that doxing people is okay will then get doxed and then they can't really say anything about it because they thought it was okay to do it to someone else. It's just the golden rule, really, but applied to the type of audience that you attract on the internet. Boogie has always wanted people to praise him. That's just the way he is. But because he himself enjoys being negative to people and saying shit about people and that kind of thing, he has to catch that himself as well. And if he can't handle it, then that's his fault because that is just the kind of thing that you attract when you start acting that way. You can't flip-flop because the people that you attract on each side of that flip-flop persona are gonna get angry at you. They're not gonna understand what you're doing. You're gonna look super ingenuine. And those two sides of that audience are just gonna clash and they're gonna blame it on you, ultimately. That's just, it, there are so many examples of this. It's such a common sense thing that even me talking about it, it's such a basic thing that I'm saying. Everyone knows this. Everyone watching this is like, yes, we get it. But but you, apparently some people don't because this sort of thing keeps happening. Have you been studying this like I told you? Oh, I have, Ted, I have, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people think that his wife leaving him is kind of the thing that marked his downfall because his videos became more self-serving and inconsistent. He stated that Boogie was a character on the internet that he wanted to be. So to me, that sounds like he endorsed the actions that the Boogie persona has done because when you look up to someone, you, you kind of endorse what their actions are. You like their actions, you want to do it, you know? But in other cases, when he's like sort of 
in his asshole kind of persona, he says, well, Boogie's the asshole here, not me, you know what I mean? And it's like, I thought you looked up to him. There's a clip on H3 where Boogie says that same-sex marriage should be done in 10 years because you shouldn't make changes right now because people will be upset. I've always believed in boiling the frog, right? Like, I've always believed, hey, we should have same-sex marriage. I love same-sex marriage. Let's do it. But the problem is, we try to get it done right now. There's going to be a huge backlash, okay? So let's, let's try to do it in 20 years, in 10 years, and let's see if we can avoid the backlash, right? Let's just like slowly, methodically change minds. People will always be upset about everything. If you have convictions, why would you have to wait to placate people? I just... Die. And then he said that he was seeing a young cam girl, a member of some sugar daddy fetish website that Boogie had a profile on that he hid, but he did have it. She then made a video saying that he isn't like the boogie that he is on camera and he's really angry and verbally abusive and guilted her as a main form of manipulation. This is sort of the thing that I said before where he's the opposite. He's either really nice on camera and really mean in person or he's trying to be nice or fake being nice in person but then on camera he's really angry. He also made a fuck ton more guilt trip content from there too. He'd say a bunch of negative stuff to fish for compliments but then blame the algorithm and, not and do nothing to actually make some changes. Then comes the saga where some of the streams that he, he was on featured him being really, really mean to random gamers in this multiplayer server, saying things like, channel the anger of your parents separating. You start together, and you probably come from a broken home, you're probably gonna get real angry when you start losing, so. Then he fishes for sympathy right afterwards and says, my parents died. He also started doing the, I want to die, so that's why I'm not losing weight thing. Health YouTubers, like Every Damn Day Fitness, started calling him out, because a lot of people like that who have gone through health struggles in the past to do with obesity and have gotten over it, make content that usually revolves around the fact that there is no excuse, and it is hard to start doing this sort of stuff, but you need to do it, and and there are ways that you can do it to make it a bit easier to keep motivated and keep going but ultimately it's on you all of the past traumas that you've had that have maybe lent a hand to you making these self-destructive choices in life have happened and you can acknowledge that and you can acknowledge that it's not necessarily your fault that those things happen to you of course the responsibility for your current actions are on you so if you keep doing these things it is your fault and there is a nuance between those things that is ultimately what i think is the main problem with a lot of people who struggle with weight, especially with these fat activists. They blame other people when, yes, things have happened in the past that might make you the kind of person who has problems with these kind of situations, but ultimately you need to own up to the current you, the you that is now, and say that you're going to make a change, and if you don't make a change, then it is on you. It is your fault. That's really what this comes down to. And Boogie, however, Despite the fact that he is a public person who made these videos in a public manner that anyone can respond to, said that it's a very mean and manipulative thing to make a video responding to him when he expects to be DM'd privately about these issues. Really, it's just that he doesn't want people to point out that he is a shithead. But it's a free internet. I mean, it's not, but we wish that it was, and we're gonna act like it is. It needs to be something you control. Because if you comfort it and all that, which he admits to multiple times in this video, it is very unhealthy, and what can happen so easily, Boogie? You are now walking around on limbs that have not been walked around on, you know, in the way you're walking on for a long time. And granted, there's a lot less weight on them, but you are still, you still have way too much weight on your frame, on your load-bearing joints. Finally, I get to eat. Despite saying that he's broke because he was in his sad boy persona, he went on to be his empowered evil guy persona and bought a $100,000 Tesla after saying that he doesn't even have enough money for rent. He also said that he would donate matched amounts donated to a suicide prevention charity and then backed out of doing that and said that he'd only give 10k which at the time seemed like such a small amount of money considering the amount that he spent on a car. He also followed up saying, be a hater only to me because I am being a lol, lol cow on purpose to shield other people from the hate that you would otherwise give to other people. I am the real martyr here. Rapists are better than you because at least they believe in something when redditors don't believe in anything. I'm gonna say as much shit and do as much shit as I can to keep your attention so you don't do it to somebody else. I'm here for you to torture me and only me. I'm gonna make a living letting you torture me. I'm gonna be the next Dark Side Phil. I'm gonna be the next Wings of Redemption. I'm gonna spend every day online to keep you fucking busy so you don't do it to somebody else. So bring it. But I want you to know I think you are the lowest of the low. I think you are the worst of the worst. 
I think that there are fucking rapists and Nazis out there who, even though they are rapists and fucking Nazis, they are more redeemable than you because at least they're doing something they fucking believe in. They may be pieces of garbage. They may be pieces of shit. They may harm other people, but at least they believe what they fucking stand for. A thing that especially gives this privacy issue a, an emphasis to show how very strange it is, is that Boogie had been tweeting constantly since 2009. If you look at his Twitter account and the in amount of tweets, it's impossible. It's an impossible number, unless it's him tweeting constantly since 2009, because otherwise he would have to spam tweet like multiple times a minute to even catch up to that number. He responds to everyone and anyone who says anything about him online. He was swatted in July during VidCon, so he wasn't even home at the time, but then he said that he was swatted in December and was home at the time and has photo evidence that he then refused to share because the sympathy that he would have gotten from the July swatting wasn't as good as he wanted, so he wanted to rewrite the narrative to get more sympathy. When it wasn't on police records that this incident occurred, he blamed the police and said that they were lazy, and then he, he cut a deal with the police to not put it in their records so they weren't lazy, it was his fault. The police obviously responded with, what the fuck are you talking about? And then he said that he would respond to Reddit threads of the allegations of him lying, and then in his edgy guy persona he said that he DM'd random people with lies about himself to stir up drama drama and blame the swatching on reddit and then says that he did all of that because he was only pretending to be retarded i don't even know what the fuck just happened he also pretended his twitter account got hacked by deleting his profile picture and then putting it back i swear this has happened to every single other person who has faked having their twitter accounts hacked there was someone what was their name creep show art or something right and they had put like some glitches on the youtube account and then they just took it away afterwards that's not actually what happens when someone hacks you most of the time when I see that kind of thing, they'd start tweeting racial slurs and shit to like make fun of the person whose account that they hacked, but these people are too cowardly to go that far to pretend to be hacked, so they just do some like thing that they've probably seen in a movie before where the hackers are all like glitchy and they wear dark edgy outfits and they speak with voice changes like anonymous or some shit and they think that that's what it really looks like in real life. <laughs> There's also this other thing that he does around these controversies where he, it's like, you know the kid that always said that they had an uncle that works at Nintendo or they had an uncle that knows about some gaming thing and that, that whatever lie that they told you about a video game was just true because their uncle works at the gaming company and told them this personally. Boogie has a friend that works for the FBI and he also said that he has like a friend that works at some tech companies, he has a friend that works in the police force, he has a friend that works in like YouTube, he, ha he has friends everywhere that tell him that he needs to do the stupid thing that he's doing. So you can't blame him for doing the stupid thing that he's doing. You have to blame the mysterious friend that he had who is an expert who told them to do this. Remember when he said that Mountain Dew is the same as air? His uncle must work at Big Air. The CEO of Air told him to breathe soda because it's the same thing. You can't criticize him for saying that because his expert uncle told him. His common tactic also, when he's in his 1 HP persona, he is agreeing with everything that someone says and then saying some mad shit and switching to his evil guy persona and then just agreeing with them again in the HP voice. He does this specifically because it stops the flow of conversation. It removes any incentive to talk to him and then he can sit in his little bubble and say that when he tries to talk to people, people are too cowardly to talk to him. It's something that I see debate bros do a lot as well, but in a different way. It's basically doing this so that it looks like you are trying to get people to talk to you, but because you're impossible to talk to, like an adult, because you're acting like a child, you can then claim that people who give up talking to you are just cowards because they can't handle you. It's also really hard to criticize someone when they're just disingenuously agreeing with you. Like, if you say, Boogie, you're a scam artist, you're a con artist, you 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 never take criticism properly, you, imp you don't implement it, but you act like you are, he'll just sit there and be like, yes, I agree, yes, I'm exactly like that, in his one HP voice. But then in the next second, he'll start flinging shit at you, and then when you try and counter that, he'll just say, yes, yes, I agree, yes, I agree. So you don't really have anything else to say. You just kind of sit there and go, oh, yeah. Remember how he tried to get a real job, or he faked trying to get a real job, but the job expert lady said that he's not doing it right? Well, he made some parody videos about getting a real job, and 
The videos did well view-wise, but watching it back now, it makes it seem like he was just doing this parody out of bitterness and spite, rather than making it like a good-natured parody. The more he does these skits, the more now it seems like he's just doing all of this to actually let out the feelings that he really has, but in a way that it looks like he's just making it up and making fun of something for someone else, you know? The Francis character is when he apparently has a parody of like a fat gamer kind of guy. And looking back on it now, a lot of people think that maybe this character is just him venting about things that he actually believes, but he knows it wouldn't really be received well, so he does it under the pretense that he's just joking. He must genuinely view criticism as hatred. I think he does, because one of the things that he always comes back to is just making videos on random comments that he receives. After this, a man by the name of Frank Hassel the fuck is that? Showed up at some stream and started to goad him and Boogie in return switched to his edgy guy persona and started to goad him back and said show up at my house, show up so I can kill you, show up at my house, you won't actually show up at my house. And then Frank actually did show up and Boogie recorded him from inside the house. Obviously knew who Frank was because of all of these confrontations on streams and whatnot, but he actually, when he comes outside, he calls Frank by some other name and acts like he doesn't even know who Frank is, which is very not true. He then does a warning shot, which if you've watched my Kyle Rittenhouse video, you know that I absolutely hate those because they're retarded and dangerous and he just it's just a very embarrassing situation, isn't it? But after this point, he tried to have this sort of big guy persona where he was like, if you show up at my house, I'm gonna shoot you, I'm gonna shoot you, I'm gonna shoot you, like... And I don't really like this Frank person, he seems a bit, like, deranged, so it's not like what he did was a good thing, but you can tell that there weren't really any winners in this kind of situation, because both of them acted very stupid. Look, here's We're the thing. Be fine. Listen, I'm gonna um, be honest with you. I'm kind of retarded. One time he put all of his money into Ethereum and then got super rich and then lost it, like that one Futurama casino bit. But then he lied about how much he had left because he pretended he was broke and it was easier for him to get donations that way. Even his idea with all the crypto stuff, the way that he explains it, it's either him killing himself because he lost all his money or him actually getting money and continuing to live because killing himself would mean that he wouldn't get the money. That's- all of his stuff is like him being like, well if I fail I'll always kill myself. If I don't fail then I can stick around to enjoy the thing that I did and then after that I'll kill myself. And it's like, you're not gonna kill yourself, man. <laughs> oh my god, daddy! What a shame. Once on a live stream he, he said as Francis that he's so fat and ugly he'd even fuck a man or a tranny to have some sort of love in his life. That's his words, not mine. Here is him like expressing what he feels, but through a quote unquote, you know, fake hood through the character. And if I could find a dude who would suck, I'd let him, but I never will, because I'm gonna fuck die alone. Even there's no dude on the planet desperate enough to suck this. But if if I could find him, I would love him. If I could find a dude or a woman or a trans person or I don't care, whatever you are, if you want to fuck me, I'll fuck you. I'm just glad to have it. And that's this kind of desperate guy persona, but when he went back to the documentary type of persona he had, he was like, oh, I deserve only the most beautiful women. And even when it comes to people that he used to be friends with, he burned his brig bridges through fence sitting. H3 had gotten sick at one point and was posting about his health. And to this, he said, Ethan, no one likes you, but you should take care of yourself. Don't die, lol. <laughs> Today I pissed off somebody who I used to consider a friend. Um, and based on the fact that I haven't talked to him in two years and that he just followed me on Twitter, unfollowed me on Twitter, um, I guess we're no longer on friendly terms. And he even talked about it on his podcast today. So let's, let's get into that. Now, as you can tell by the title and thumbnail, the person I'm talking about is Ethan Klein. And Ethan Klein had tweeted this on April 1st saying he was not going to do a podcast because he was bedridden. And later on that day, he uploaded images of him being in the hospital. So I tweeted this and didn't think twice about it. I said, apparently Ethan is in the hospital. I know a lot of people don't like this guy, but I really wish he would take better care of himself mentally and physically. Take it from someone who is bad at doing nothing. It leads to ruin and misery. And I actually meant to say who's bad at doing anything, but I don't know why I typed it that way. That should give you an idea of how much thought I put into my tweets. So apparently this is very upsetting to Ethan. Hmm. Really makes you think. He bashed a doll of his ex-wife in a dank, dark room locked under the stairs with like serial killer writing on the walls. And compared to like this and his, his sex doll content on his porn blog ages ago where he was like, well, you can lock it in a dark room and you ca it can't do anything. It's like, I feel very scared for that 
woman that's currently living with him. When he finally revealed his like weird looking underage girlfriend, he decided to reveal her and say that he was dating his daughter and really hang on to like the pedophile thing as a joke for him. He hyped up the pedophile thing to get more views out of controversy and he even made a video called I broke up with my girlfriend and it was some dumb skit video with horrible acting. The entire skit is about how Boogie is poor and the girlfriend is super young and being used as a sex doll which is like again a thing that just comes across as very creepy and that I don't know how much of it is a joke at this point. And it makes me wonder, when they inevitably break up, what is he gonna say about her? Because if you look at his parents, he used to say that both of them raped him and that they were horrible to him and they used to sexually abuse him. However, there was a video from a couple years ago where he was talking to his deceased mum as if he was like paying respects to her and praying to her in her, her wherever her soul may be. He said they love you because you gave birth to me and how much he loved her despite the fact that she was apparently a horrific abuser and he hated her and she was a neglectful rapist who made him fat. Do you remember that YouTube video I filmed of you? Thousands of people seen it, tens of thousands. And I know you're embarrassed but they love you because he gave birth to me. There was even a series where he went back to his hometown and said how much he missed all of it as if it wasn't really her abusive, horrific stuff like he said it was ages ago. Looking back on the Draw My Life video, everything Boogie was saying is probably fake. It was extra sad or seemed that everything bad was happening to him at once. I do think that because he grew up as a fat kid, he was probably bullied a lot and maybe his parents did give him some neglectful nutrition sort of thing where he didn't know how to take care of himself, but he flip-flops on so many things that it's impossible to really tell. It's especially impossible to tell because whenever he does the 1HP voice, it's him saying the real story of the things that really happened, but we all know that he's lying when he uses that voice because he's trying to get sympathy. So really, what is true? In some of Boogie's recent outbursts, he screams so bad that it sounds like Francis. Yes, my mother kissed twitted my fucking tipples! It's kind of strange because they've just kind of melded together. He has so many activities and buys and eats so much because even when he's alone, all he does is try to find ways to distract himself from himself. His real self just isn't really there anymore because he's so used to it switching between the people that he talks to. I don't even know if the people in his real life know who he really is because he probably doesn't at this point. Now somebody walks up to me and says, hey, you lost 200 pounds, you could have lost more and you should have lost more. How does it feel, feel to be a failure? My answer is go fuck yourself. Why wow, the fuck are you going to be judging me on goddamn Twitter? I'd say that personally. <laughs> Wait, <baby. laughs> <laughs> Who are you to judge me on Twitter? <laughs> what the fuck? Even back then, thinking about Francis, his Francis persona would get a lot of views because the sort of troll character was very popular, but when he'd make videos as himself, he came across as very nice and caring by comparison to Francis's sharp outbursts, and this sharp contrast made the Steven persona that he portrayed look way better, and that's why people liked him a lot because they thought he was genuine. A lot of people said that he was once called the Mr. Rogers of YouTube, but I never paid attention to Boogie before this point, so I don't know if that's actually true. Because because you can kind of say that people call you anything when you're popular enough and no one really has to see evidence of that, we can kind of just assume that that's true. Boogie can just say, people call me Mr. Rogers of YouTube and you can just kind of say whatever you want, you know? Very so last Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> very last Mountain Dew. <laughs> This was a no. lie. <laughs> Ultimately, he did start out a bit subtle with his manipulation and it was a different time back then. Nowadays, we don't see it as subtle at all, but we see it as loud as this very loud ice cream on the scientific chart that I've put on the screen for you. But back then, people weren't used to having videos of random unedited strangers on demand like this and kind of assumed that everything that they were saying was at least true on some basis. There's a subreddit called Sam and Tolkien. Those users immediately started making these sort of big threads on him and they were petty while probably correct, but it seemed to really take a toll on him. He seemed to blame them for his own docs, he blamed them for every time that he seems to almost die, which is like weekly. I don't know anything about who these people are, but it seems like every single time he mentions Redditors, he brings them up. They live rent-free in his head, to the point where 
He said that if he ever got super successful again, he would specifically spite the Redditors instead of just letting go of everything and living his life normally. To them, he once stated, the more you hate, the more I'm love, and invited the hate, goaded it on under the guise of saying that he doesn't care because he knows he has support. But we know now it was because of victimhood and the more victimhood he has, the more fishing for compliments he can do. Because at the time, his audience would only become more supportive. Nowadays, he doesn't understand that it's backfiring, so we can't really do that anymore. It seemed like the smaller his audience was, the better it was for him because he had more money, he had more of a small loyal fan base, he had a wife that came from it, he had people who were shouting him out and saying nice things, but then as soon as he actually got a really big fan base, that was when it just he couldn't cope with it anymore. After a lot of this stuff came out, especially the documentary, Boogie tried to damage control by making the, the whole thing about sympathy and releasing some of the footage that wasn't used in the documentary as a way to try and get more views for his dying channel. This is where he says that food is a form of self-harm for him because he knows that by eating more he is getting closer to death and he's doing it on purpose. He then says that the documentary was about addressing his mistakes and taking accountability for it, when he immediately afterwards says that everything Mike said was wrong and lies and Mike was so much of a shitty person that he wouldn't piss on Mike if he was on fire. So ultimately, I don't know. Personally, I think that Mike did a very good job and he managed to confront some of Boogie's lies to really paint a picture there that seems more authentic than a lot of things that Boogie has said online, so I'm inclined to think that the documentary was pretty good. When Mutaha confronted Boogie on a live stream about the things that he said about it, including the financial figures and the inconsistencies that Boogie has said about him, Boogie blamed Mike for making up the money even though that doesn't really add up. Boogie would have been the one that had to give Mike these statistics, so even if Mike got them wrong, it was because Boogie got them wrong. He even went on a financial audit channel to talk about it, and then he agreed and was really nice to the guy who did the financial audit at the time, but afterwards, when it was beneficial for him to say that everything on there was wrong, he then shits on the guy and says that the guy was just trying to catch a big trend. Are you so mad at me? What did I do? I, I, I'm not Jackson Clark. I don't care about Jackson Clark. I just don't like you, friend. Love you, though. Curry didn't do anything to me. <laughs> Fucking um, hot chips didn't do anything to me. I just don't like <laughs> Are these, are these that face? There was a video as well where he poured some Mountain Dew into the into a garbage bag to make a big show that he wasn't drinking it anymore, but the soda bottles were still in the background, so I don't know what the fuck's going on with that. He himself would also make updates and go on about how much it matters to him that he was losing weight because he didn't actually want to die after all and he needed to make a change, but when people would ask him about his own accountability, he would say that, why do you care so much about my weight loss? Okay, I'll really make a thing about it if you really care so much about it, despite the fact that it was he who really made it a big deal. So many people were talking about this that he ended up appearing as Francis in a doctor's coat on a live stream and screamed at everyone about how they were so shitty. Wow. What the fuck are you going to be judging me on goddamn Twitter? I take that personally. <laughs> <Wait. baby. laughs> <laughs> who are you to judge me on Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, listen, I know that this isn't really my type of content in general, so anything that I say about it in a criticism kind of way is just more my own opinion on genres of content and my own preferences, but Francis is so cringy to me as a concept. Like, I think that satire personas are fine, and they can be very funny, like Orange Peanut is cool, you know, It's but Francis just never sits right with me in any of these clips. I guess it's just my bias because I know what he is now, but I feel like I wouldn't have watched him. Even back then, like, I knew who Boogie was, but I didn't give a shit, and I just didn't care, you know? If you were a fan of Francis back in the day, tell me why you liked him. Because basically, every single thing that he does amounts to eating as a self-harm, suicide bait, and then saying that he's actually going to try this time, and then suicide baiting again, and then saying that his parents were shitty and molested him, but then said that his dad deserved better than what he got, and if you say anything shitty about his parents, he's going to beat you up. Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Hey. Eh? Yes. Look at you. Boogie had dropped that he had cancer as soon as he finished his doctor's appointment, because he likes to live tweet everything, as he has said. He said he had just been told that he had cancer, directly told 
using the word cancer. Using the word cancer knowing that it denotes something very serious. And when he complained about his health issues before, he said that he had something called polycythemia vera, which was what he had called the easy mode or animal crossing form of cancer, because it was just a form of something that wasn't actually known as the big C in the way that most of us think of it. But as soon as he started scamming people, the polycythemia vera suddenly need transformed into a very serious cancer diagnosis that he needed money for. No one really questioned it at the time because most people wouldn't dare make up something like this. You don't lie about having cancer. You wouldn't cross the line, one of those big lines that you just don't even approach, even if you're a shitty person on the internet. Doing that kind of thing makes you an even shittier person, someone who's even in a different category from the usual shitty types. But then people started to dig and it just didn't make sense. Yeah, that caused this and the treatments <laughs> for it are consistent with secondary polycythemia. Um, yeah. None of these are consistent with cancer. And the fact that he's saying and that he's they've now ordered a biopsy two no, years yeah. after, two years ago, you said that you had a cancer diagnosis, but now you just said now they're doing a biopsy to confirmation. check for cancer. Confirmation. 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 Meaning you, you don't have it. <laughs> Meaning you do not have confirmation. You ever read this? It's like, yeah. you're already fucked. SMB, are we treating? Are we treating a blood cancer without actually confirming it yet? For two years, you've been being, you've been out of a cancer treatment without confirming there's actually cancer there. Look at exactly this whole thing. Tell me a single document with polycythemia. The medication that he said he was on wasn't really the same as what he should have needed. In particular, a lot of helpful information came from Mr. Medica, who understandably is very angry about this whole fiasco because Mr. Medica actually does have cancer and a whole myriad of medical issues that leave him in a lot of pain. Boogie also refused to give any proper information about it, but said that if people were saying that he faked it, it was so bad that these people should be flooded by his fans and reported for being critical. This culminated in people confronting him on the Low Cow Live podcast. Can you just show us the diagnosis? I don't understand. I have no interest in finally giving it the last shred of dignity I have left You don't have any dignity. You don't have any. What's the dignity? No. Remember, no I'm dignity. I'm fucking sorry. I no understand dignity. your decision. This is just an example of his dignity. Uh, I'll yeah, hand over no. any passwords you need, wherever you want. This is peak fire, bro. Sorry. Yep. Boogie exemplifies <laughs> dignity. Dude, I got confused on <laughs> myself just now. I was like, what? His first tactic was to basically act confused. Like, well, my doctor said that I had a form of cancer, not cancer. We just didn't know what it was. We were still testing it, so I just tweeted it as it happened at the time. Even though, if this was true, as soon as he got the correction, he would have live tweeted this as well. But he had left it with the assumption that he did have the big C and that he was actually dying very soon. He then changed his story and claimed that he doesn't actually live tweet and never did and he was just sitting on the diagnosis for a while before bravely coming out with it. He would also randomly brag that he would be confront when he would be confronted like, yeah, I couldn't afford the cancer test but I got a windfall, you know what I mean? But that backfired because his windfall was from the scam sponsorship that I just mentioned. <laughs> cancer. <laughs> Can you get your it's patient portal up on your- Two years of not being questioned about this. Come mm -hmm. on now. Look, I've oh. made a minimal amount of money from this. <laughs> and like send sure. it to Tom. And I'm not somebody. going to. Sure, he's, not, he's never doing that. He does not have a cancer he's diagnosis. Not, There's zero percent chance he has one. You just said right. before that you don't have the money for extra medical stuff. If they don't need that test to confirm well, just, cancer, right? just spend extra money, money on a test you don't need. Have you heard of this, Destiny? I just got a bit of a windfall. Why did he say that that way after being skewered for taking advantage of his audience? He says it He's so now proudly. decided that he thinks that this is a time to brag about making money. So it, weird. Like... He also said that he would never reveal his medical history on his little dashboard thing or any medical receipts at all. He claims that this is the one source of privacy that he has left and he needs to cling to it, even though he was so ready to share everything about cancer before people actually demanded proof. It seems like a very dirty thing to ask someone to prove that they have an illness, and it makes people sound like they're assholes. It makes anyone who's questioning this sound like they're shitheads. Because, generally, we like to think that people don't have it in them to lie about something so serious like this. But people like Boogie have unfortunately made the something necessary because they do in fact lie about it. Boogie can only really blame himself for this, and if you feel kind of dirty and shitty for daring to question if someone really has the illness that they're claiming, 
blame Boogie, not yourself. His next strategy was to start screaming so hard that the mic peaks and sometimes you can't actually hear what he says at all. He basically screams that he would never do this because it's an insult to his family to fake having cancer because people that he has known has died of cancer and his girlfriend died of cancer. He was trying to do the emotional angle that might work on a teenager or something, but it didn't work on a bunch of grown men who were already coming in very critical of what he has to say. He claimed that he would send the receipts to Keemstar, but then retracts this when Keem says that he'll send these to Mutaha as well, and even though none of this is going to get leaked publicly, it's just a verification, and Mutaha wouldn't just post that shit randomly online, Boogie knowing full well of, about this, of course. Boogie retracts that offer and says that he doesn't trust any of them, even though he was he was very pro giving evidence to them. I feel like from the very beginning, he was only pretending that he was okay with giving them evidence because he knew that they would share the evidence with each other to verify this and he could easily bank on that by saying, oh well, I, I don't want all of you to know, I only want this guy to know, and then he could be able to retract it, so he was never intending to actually do it. He also starts arguing about how he was mistaken because the doctor had an accent and he couldn't understand anything, yet could very easily understand the word polycythemia vera coming from a very heavily accented man. He bounces between saying that the doctor was amazing and that he doesn't want a doctor to reveal who the doctor is, and says that the doctor is a shithead who is misdiagnosing him for some strange reason of his own. His brother, who is also a doctor, swears by this diagnosis, and I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. Poor guy. It's not a narrative with one goddamn shred of privacy. That's no. it. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. No. So you, your shred of privacy is this. But not being naked on film, not talking about <laughs> fucking wars, yeah, yeah, not talking naked about right being naked. Right Mary, guys, let's do it. Let's do it. Just go to the internet at some point in that two-year span and be like, "My doctor's actually confused. Like, I may not have cancer. We're getting I, another um, test. Why? Why not say because, that? Because I this would, money would go this away. is this is what would have happened." No, the answer is I would have been held to account for my lies, Keemstar, so why yes, would I do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so yes. Why would I do that until I absolutely had no escape? Boogie was asked if he could do some sort of charity thing where people around him would donate to charity if he revealed proof to them. He didn't even have to share the proof publicly, just reveal it to them and then they would donate their money to charity. It's a win-win situation. If you have this sort of situation and you actually had that disease that you were claiming that you did, this would be like the best thing for you to do to just be like, yes, I actually do have it, now give all your money to charity. But he refused. Not only that, but he wanted more money, even though he doesn't have any proof. It goes on for a while, a while, before he goes into his 1HP voice and says that it's the real him being sincere and that he had a serious and bad case of misjudgment and that he was actually faking it the entire time. However, it doesn't end there. His next tactic was to start randomly bringing up serious, probably fake stories of neglect and abuse in his home and rubbing his nipples while he screamed. Yes, my mother twitted my fucking tipple! This is all just an act to put on in the first place to get views because he wants money. And But at the same time, if you have this much conviction to pretend to be mentally ill for this long, I feel like you have to be a bit mentally ill in the first place to think that that's even a thing that you want to do. He also brings in his girlfriend to try and back him up and she seems incredibly nervous and it's honestly kind of shitty that she was forced to speak in this way. He's just looming in the background while she's just saying that everything he does is correct and that everything is, he does is good and that she stands by him and she has no choice to stand by him while he's just threateningly looming in the background. I feel really bad for her. This culminated in him saying that he would get a tattoo on his face that said liar because it would prove that he's actually being genuine now, but the tattoo vanished in some of his other videos because it's clearly fake. <laughs> he then threatened suicide for the 17th time to Keemstar over the phone and said stuff like, if you call the cops, I can commit suicide by cop. Call the cops, call the cops. Even when confronted by destiny, threatened to cut himself on his stream with some random knife that he got from the kitchen, knowing people would tell him to stop because their own morality would not let them just wait for someone to cut themselves like that. He was banking on that fact and he really had no intention of harming himself in any way. But because people felt morally that they had to tell him to stop, he stopped. Keemstar even cut the call because he didn't want this stuff to happen on his stream. However, Boogie then assumed that they were offline in the call with the remaining members and didn't know that Destiny had been streaming the whole time as well. Boogie had said, 
good show in a very calm voice, showing that it was really all fake. Yeah, Only when I'm stripping. It's a woman's name. Yeah. Liar. Liar. <laughs> good show. Okay. Good yeah, show. Good like, show. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh my yeah. god. Oh. All right, then. Oh. Just a scum fuck. Oh. Like I said, he acts really calm in person, but then he's really shitty on the, the stream, or he's really shitty in person and really kind on a stream. Don't know why that is. Somebody who's a psychologist, make a video on that, please. I really want to know. I actually really, really, really want to know. It just seems strange to me that someone who apparently has nothing left and is only begging for the bare minimum also gets upset that he can't celebrate his birthday week. A birthday week? Birthday means birthday. The day. Oh, not yeah. The week. My birth. And, and then you'll be like, week. you gotta Google it's colloquialism to yeah, understand it's a yeah, it's a their birthday, yeah. they didn't week. <laughs> what are you gonna do, eat? Oh right, you, you don't like food because it's a form of self-harm, but you actually do like food, and then you're disassociating because you have DID like a Tumblr woman now. Anyway, after all of that, Boogie's not doing so well currently. Outside of videos making fun of him and lolcow live, no one really cares about him. Even I don't really care about him, I just think it's funny to talk about. He's boring, he never learns, people are sick of it, and he knows it somewhere deep down, but he's not willing to give up. Even when with the cancer thing, something recently came up that way back in April, he had said that he had cancer, but no one noticed because no one pays attention to anything he had to say. Months ago, he had planted the lie and was very intentional with it way back then, but no one even cared. Even the people on the stream didn't care because they were so used to him saying that he would off himself that they just tuned out everything that he had to say. What kind of a person is that? Something that's also really important that I kind of wanted to put more towards the end of the video was that, you know, everyone knows, you know, faking cancer bad, blah blah blah. We know this, we're adults, so at least most of us, I hope. But I did also want to include something from someone that I know personally because it's, you know, when it comes to these, I guess, more invisible sort of illnesses, like Boogie claimed to have chronic illness and all that kind of stuff, I've seen a lot of people fake it and it does just hurt to hear because a lot of these are already stigmatized and I think it's important to get the opinion of someone who actually has it and like, I can vouch for this person, I know them personally and I know they do actually have what they're talking about and you obviously you know you can't really take anything on the internet 100% so you don't have to believe me but I'm just saying I asked them two questions I asked them what they personally thought about when it comes to red flags to try and figure out if someone's actually lying or not online about the kind of illness and also what they feel about people the damage that's done where people are faking these invisible illnesses that already have a stigma attached to them and that a lot of people still believe aren't even real even though they are real lack of uh, just any consideration for you to lie about something so significant which is you know like the grass is green right like it's it's more or less obvious uh but it does speak to just like like, some people might not think it's a big deal, right? Like, oh, you're just lying about this and that. You know, it's not like lying about something else. Like, oh, it's not like you're a murderer or whatever the fuck. But, um... It's already very frustrating knowing how much in the world is filled with, like, distrust for people. Because there's just such an endless tide of, uh, lying motherfuckers especially on the internet. Um, and I think in, in with Boogie in particular, the reason it's so... It's so hard to deal with. All we know about him at this point is that he just likes to say whatever he possibly can to be given attention and or money. It's a fucking asshole thing to do because it really just sows a type of distrust where people are going to always question who is like is just fucking saying bullshit or who's just wants attention and it's very frustrating because all these sort of things like people like to think the internet doesn't matter but we're on the internet so much that all the information we get from the internet is just inundated into our society and our brains so whenever you have people lying about shit on the internet or doing anything on the internet period that has like a cascading effect across people in real life now there's obviously lots of people who are isolated who are older who don't give a shit about technology and so you don't you're not going to see a lot of them but for all the people who are growing up 
all of their impressions about what life is like is influenced by the internet. So, like, when young people have to experience deceit in this fashion, it, it's going to sow, like, future consequences. Like, how many people are going to be brushed aside or accused of lying or, or just w have something in their life denied from them? Because of just this sowing distrust. Man, it's it's hard it's hard to put into words how frustrating it is because it's at the same time, it's sort of just this thing that it feels almost like we just have to accept it. That uh, everybody has to be deluded about everything. When you have an invisible illness that is invisible in real life, then you know, that's one thing. That's like one layering of frustration. But when it's on the internet, you don't know if anybody's saying the truth about anything. Right? Like, somebody can say that they've broken all their all the bones in their body. They have glass bones and paper skin, and every morning they break their legs, and every afternoon they break their arms. But you can't see them. You're not talking to them face to face. They're just some fucker on the internet. And so... I think red... I guess if I have to try and think of red flags, it's probably, it's probably very much like what Boogie did, where you just tried to use it to get lots of attention. Where you're griping and you're moaning and you're whining in like a way that just isn't very constructive to anybody's life. Like, uh, I don't go on the internet and start announcing to everybody that I have fibromyalgia. And I don't really enjoy the idea of doing that. Not just because of just fear of reprisal for people be thinking that I'm a liar as well because I'm another faceless person on the internet, but more so because why would I want to draw attention to that when it's already like such a problem in my life like why why am i gonna be going out like uh trying to get attention from tons and tons and tons of people over it you know like it's it's fine to talk about your uh your struggle story once in a while but people seem to think that it makes sense to trauma dump on the internet and more and more i think every i think more and more every day i start to feel like uh Maybe more people are lying than we even think there are. Like if somebody, like if you're at, like if somebody's asking me questions, like you're asking me right now, it's like, yeah, like it's obviously I have to talk about it. doing it out in the open and insisting about it and trying to like make it some identifying part of yourself is very strange. Like it sucks in real life when people just don't get it and they don't know, and they can't know because they're not gonna know they're not gonna know you you have a disability unless they really spend a lot of time around you. So like. You know, it's it, it, it again. It's just this cascading effect of like people on the internet makes things hard to talk about and hard to believe. And I think it's important to like talk to someone affected by this. Sure, I'm making fun of them, but it's still important. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Like, because it is important. Because as funny as it is, now much of a piece of shit boogie is now common sense. It is to just be angry with the guy. It does have. I do think it does have lasting, cascading consequences. So, like, whenever somebody with a lot of, you know, uh, eyes on them, like Boogie, does something like this, it does have a cascading effect. Now, you obviously, you can't measure those things without history going by, and you actually, like, counting, you know, going by the numbers, being a math person who does statistics and research and all that shit, so you never really know, no. Like, it just logically, it just has, it is just obvious that it is a cascading effect. Hmm. Really makes you think.